The whiskey friends, Pete journey continues. This time, the darkest Ardbeg ever. Is it the darkest? Let's find out. Dark Cove Ardbeg committee release. Let's check it out. Okay folks, welcome back to the Whiskey Friends with me Alan. Here we go, Pete again. I know, you must be getting sick of the sight of me with Pete now. Uh, but I see when I start a journey and I start a Pete journey, I see it through. So I'm cracking through with this one today. I have been looking forward to it. I cracked it open on my last live stream. I had a wee bit of a six bottle uncorking and this was one of them. But I just, I've just realised... I must have got through a load of it on that uh, live stream. I didn't realise I'd drunk as much of it. Uh, I'd also did the... Just to show you guys, these must have got battered on that night. You guys should have stopped me. I know it's I never got through much of the Tony port. I don't know what happened. I think I must have poured one dram of that. But it looks like... Where are we? I've got way past the, the neck and the shoulder of all of these, so I must have had a right good few drams that night. But anyway, let's go on with this one. So I'm looking forward to this. It's the darkest Ardbeg ever. I'm not too sure whether it is the darkest or whether or not. Whether it's just part of the marketing with the name Dark Cove. But I've poured a Perpetuum just to try and see if I can get you a, a colour comparison. Look, there, there is a big, big difference in the colour. This is the Perpetuum. So I might, when I'm finished, I might just have a wee dram of this just to finish this one off. Got it, my uh, dram poured 20 minutes ago. Uh, I've got it covered up by my trusty coin number 76 this time. You know what you do? Check the description. Let me know. Okay, so, I know, sorry, no shame. Ardbeg Dark Cove, okay this one, this is the 2016 committee release, it's bottled at 55% ABV, they also did a standard release uh, Ardbeg Dark Cove which was bottled at 46% so it's a little bit lighter in ABV in this one, it's a little less expensive, but the problem you found with that, when I bought this one I paid about £120 for it, and I think the the less the, the normal standard dark cove was about 90 pounds but i think you'll find all the hype and all the rave that's going on about this one it's really really sought after and it's really difficult to get a hold of i think usually the only places you can find it now is at auction uh i think it's fetching anywhere between 250 pounds and 350 pounds just depending on the auction just depending on what's going on even the standard our big dark cove is really really difficult to get a hold of as well that's that's fetching anything up to about 170 180 pounds at auction so it's sought after is it as good as that let's find out so what i'm going to do today guys this this is actually it's mature the next bourbon casks and apparently the darkest sherry casks whatever that means so whether it's first fill sherry or what i'm not too sure it just says on the label it's the darkest cask, that darkest sherry. So let's find out. So on the nose of this one, let's do the colour first. Actually, it's a real nice copper colour. Uh, real, real nice on the nose. Okay, wow, it's rich. The peat's there, the smoke. But the first thing it hits you is it's kind of dark fruit. Everything seems a bit dark. It's dark fruit. Plum, blackcurrant. Then there's a little bit of dried fruit. Some figs, some raisins, I think. Yeah, raisin. Prunes, maybe. I don't always like the smell of prunes, but I think there's a little bit of prune in this one. But that smoke's there. It's a, it's peaty. It's smoky. It's very similar to the Lagavulin, actually. I actually thought... When I've got onto peat, it would just all be smoke. But these last couple have been really, really nice because it's a nice balance between smoke and peat. It's uh, smoking uh, fruits and different things. It's not all about the peat. But it's a real nice kind of, 
Again, it's a kind of distant bonfire in this one. Smoky. Little bit of salt. Little bit of brine. That kind of sea airs there. It's got a, a little reminiscent of a kind of an old pulpney. It's got that kind of sea breeze kind of nose on it. But again, it's there's a big, big hit of chocolate. I think it's the most prominent. Once you get past the, the smoke and the dried fruits and the dark fruits, it's there's a big, big chocolate note. Not sure whether it's dark chocolate. I don't think it's full on dark chocolate, but it's it's definitely chocolate. And then there's a really nice caramel, vanilla, toffee. It's got that sweetness from the toffee and the caramel. Wow. It is a really, really nice nose to be fair, guys. It's it's the the peat actually, the smoke has actually dropped back into the distance now. It's it's letting the other things come out and take over. A little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of clove. Maybe some pepper. Yeah, you've guessed it, black pepper. And then there's a real, real nice citrusy, zesty note. I think it's a bit of lemon, maybe some lime, maybe even some orange. So it's quite citrusy. Again, it's a real, real nice nose, guys. I'm surprised. And right, right there, there's a real nice, what I tend to find, I tend to find it a lot in um, Glen Goins, is that real nice, older, Glen Goins have got that real nice old leather note. A little bit of old leather here as well. So, it's a really, really nice engaging nose. A little bit complex in the nose, there's lots there. Probably you peat heads would probably pick up a little bit more. But yeah, there's a few bits and bobs to be getting on me in there. So, without any further ado guys, I'm really looking forward to having a quick sip of this one. So, slanch. Wow. That's where it's going. On the first initial sip, it's rich. It's creamy. It's oily. Got a really nice mouthfeel. But initially it's quite soft on arrival. And then, bang, the black pepper comes in. The spice, the cinnamon, the clove. Peppery. As the pepper subsides... It's, it's got a lovely, I think it's PX sherry as well, so there's a really nice sweetness coming from the PX. Pretty sure it's PX, it tastes like PX. It's really, really sweet. But coming from the PX, it's got that kind of, it's like a kind of, it's like a dessert in a glass. It's kind of, it's like a pudding. It's those raisins, those plums, blackberries. But it looks like they're all covered in chocolate. So it's like chocolate covered raisins. It's almost got a like that that syrupy note of it. It's almost like it's almost got a kind of with a vanilla, it's like a kind of kind of custard note. It's a wee bit custardy. Real, real nice. Let's try a wee bit more of this. I think I'm getting into the peak, guys. I think I'm starting to enjoy it. I'm, well, I'm drinking some nice ones, so let's try this again. Cheers. Chocolate's everywhere. But so is the smoke. It's a little bit salty on that second sip. The salt, the brine. It's almost a little bit maritime. But it's peppery. So it's, it's smoky throughout. There's chocolate throughout. It's spicy now on the palate throughout. But in between there's those lovely little kind of black currants. That dessert note. The custard, the vanilla, the toffee. It's even bordering on a bit like a little bit of treacle note now, guys. So it's got a little bit like treacle. It's very, very thick, very, very vis viscous. Out of the spice, the cinnamon's there, the cloves there, but the pepper there seems to be the dominant spice in there. It's a bit peppery. Real, real nice. Heading towards the finish, it, it, again, it's just exactly like the nose. It goes a little bit zesty, so the lemon and the orange is there. Real, real nice orange note coming from it. Really, really enjoying this one, guys. So, as I say, this has been sitting around on my shelf uh, since about 2016. So, I've been sitting on it for a while. 
uh, four years it's been on the shelf. Didn't ever think I would open it, guys, because I always, I, my first intentions was on a, it was an investment purpose. I did buy a couple of bottles and I did drink one of them, but I didn't drink all of it because I'm not a peat head, but I did share it with some friends, so I did, I did quite a bit of sharing in the last one. Don't think I really appreciated what I had when I drunk it initially. Group of lads around, corked it, had a few. Next time the lads are around, I think they can have polished it off. So it went very, very quickly. But after watching on YouTube, this is highly rated. Everyone seems to be rating it way into the 90s, 94s, 95s. I've even seen, I think, Eric Waits just given it a 98. So I don't know if it's quite that much of a score for me. But it's been rated quite a bit. And I think that's probably why it's pretty much sought after. Um... All of those notes are all kind of still hanging around. That chocolate is definitely a big, big chocolate, but the vanilla, the custard, it's lots and lots of layers. A little bit ashy now. A little bit sooty, a little bit ash. Uh, real, real nice. A little bit of chocolate. That maritime's there, the sea breeze is there. It's all kind of balancing. It's, it is really, really nicely balanced, beautifully balanced. Um, but let's do a bit for the finish folks and see how we got on with the finish I know I've got the hat on again there's a reason guys lockdown I did shave my hair about 6 or 7 weeks ago but it's come all the way back again so I'm having a bad hair day day at the minute so I've, I've got the hat on just to kind of cover that up but anyway let's get back thanks for noticing let's get back to the whiskey so on the finish Spicy finish, a little bit spicy, it's sooty, it's ashy, chocolate's everywhere, a little bit of nice dryness, I think that's coming for the, the soot, the ashy, chocolate, vanilla, toffee, and just as it's heading right towards the end, the end guys of the finish, the old leather's there, and I'm now picking up some really nice, maybe some tobacco leaf. Really, really nice. So, wonderful whiskey. Glad I've opened it. As I say, I didn't think I'd ever open it, but I have. So the deed is done. It's the case now of just opening it, enjoying it, and sharing it. Sharing it with you guys. Um, if you've tried the Dark Cove Committee release, over to you. Let me know how you've got on, mate, guys. So, score-wise, what would I score it? Uh, this is pretty cool. Uh, I'm getting a wee bit now with these scores. I'm trying to compare. I've just did the Lagavulin Jazz. And I gave that a 91. But on the night when I actually tried both of these, I did prefer the Lagavulin Jazz. But now I've had a chance to go back to this. There's not a lot to split them, guys. This this is a sought after art bag, and, and there's there's a reason for that. Most people are raving about it. Yeah, it could be a hype. Some people might like it. When you get hyped up to that, it might be a wee bit of disappointment when you actually come and try it. But this certainly hasn't disappointed me. I have enjoyed it. Score wise, I think it's very very comparable now with the Lagavulin and Jazz. So the score for me with this is going to be the same. It's 91 out of 100 with this one. I'm going to look at both of them as the bottle goes down and I may come back and do a head-to-head -head with them together because I think they're both that good and they deserve to be kind of put together. But I don't think it's quite fair to do it at the minute. So maybe two or three months when I've really got into both of these bottles then I may come back and do a head-to-head -head, which I think might be quite interesting. So, yeah, 91 out of 100, that's me. Just another friendly reminder, guys, if you're a returning subscriber, then thanks very much and welcome back. If you've popped in for the first time, you may want to hit that subscribe button just down below. Don't forget to click the bell and it'll keep you up to date with future notifications. We're also on Patreon. You can check us out there. Pop along, have a look. Uh, Facebook, Instagram. Twitter, I'll pop links into the description down below if you want to go and have a look at all of those pages. That's pretty much it. Don't
don't forget to hit that thumbs up button smash the thumbs up button youtube like it gets the video noticed and until next time guys only last thing to say is as usual the pleasure is in the sharing and i'll see you all very soon thank you very much bye bye